I would like to welcome you to Creating Sacred Space in Our Lives. I am Tripp Martin, the pastor of Auburn First Baptist Church in Auburn, Alabama, at the corner of College and Glen. And we find ourselves at the end of the journey of Lent. As we have walked with Jesus along that path from Ash Wednesday, now in the midst of Holy Week, on our way to Good Friday and Easter morning. We have been thinking about the different titles for Jesus. Uh, they are not exhaustive, uh, but they are helpful. Friend, teacher, savior, Lord, way, and presence, as we have benefited from the work of Diana Butler Bass, uh, much of it found in her book, Freeing Jesus. And many of the weeks we talked about concrete ways that we see Jesus, friend, teacher, savior, Lord. And we're also talking about less tangible ways that we see Jesus, Jesus as way. And now Jesus as presence. Because the lingering question here at the end of Lent, particularly after the event of Good Friday and in the lingering silence of Holy Saturday, before we are surprised yet again on Easter morning, is what do we do now that Jesus is gone? That as disciples, we followed Jesus, we learned from him. And now, after Good Friday, we have so many questions. Israel was not restored. Rome is still in charge. Wounds are still not healed. There is not peace or shalom. We are wondering, is Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One? And Easter morning is the answer to the questions of Holy Saturday that death is stronger than love, that everything Jesus said and did is validated by Easter morning, that the kingdom of God is here, that it may not be fully here, that Christ will return to fulfill God's hope for creation. But still on Easter, and in all those days following that great day, there is still questions on a practical level. Because once Easter comes, Jesus goes. He ascends into heaven, which means the disciples are learning how to lean into a life of faith without Jesus immediately with them. Even though scripture does not explicitly name Jesus as presence, it does talk about God still being with us after Easter. Like at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, where it says, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Or there in the Gospel of Matthew, when the disciples are walking to Emmaus and Jesus starts walking with them, and they do not recognize him until they stop and break bread and they look back on walking with that unknown person who is Jesus and said, were not our hearts strangely warmed? Or in the Gospel of John where Jesus departs, but he says, I will send the Spirit to be with you, that we are never apart from the presence of Christ. Diana Butler Bass shares this, shares this wonderful story, which most parents or anyone who has cared for children can relate to, because her daughter asked her one day, where does Jesus live? And Diana Butler Bass said, well, Jesus lives in your heart. But children have a way of pressing the question. She kept asking. So, 
Her father said, well, Jesus is in heaven. And this answer revealed a tension which we all live with. That Jesus is with us in our hearts. But Jesus is also somewhere else in heaven. And in order to address this attention, the church has always said, God is both imminent and transcendent. God is both with us and beyond us. And remembering Jesus as presence helps us resolve some of that tension because Jesus is the incarnate Word of God. The Word become flesh where God is with us in an imminent sense. But now, after the resurrection, that Jesus is gone, that tension is somewhat resolved, remembering that Jesus is also presence, that Christ is still with us, that we can relate to Christ even now in the same way that we look back and seeing the disciples walking with Jesus in their everyday lives. One thing that helps us resolve some of this tension is communion, gathering around the table of grace, where Diana Butler Boss's, Diana Butler Bass's daughter once said after communion, Jesus isn't in my heart. Jesus is in my tummy. That idea of eating the bread and drinking the cup and the word of God becoming a part of us. It is both imminent and transcendent, both tangible and mysterious that the presence of Christ becomes a part of us. It's why we talk about the church as the body of Christ, that we embody the presence of Christ as the presence of Christ is a part of us. So Christ is present with us in our daily lives, holding us with a strength that is beyond ourselves. When we look at the glory of God, particularly the glory of resurrection, and the joy of Easter morning, we can oftentimes not see the presence of Christ in our daily lives because it just seems too wondrous to be found in a random Tuesday morning. When Diana Butler Bass lived in Memphis, her good friend, Phyllis Tickle, who was a well-known author, scholar of religious trends and spiritual practices, that one day Phyllis Tickle came over and they were sitting on Diana Butler Bass's front porch. And it was during a time where Diana Butler Bass was not able to travel and go about doing a lot of her work elsewhere. And Phyllis Tickle had just returned from the Vatican, covering a story there and doing some research. And Diana says she was quite envious of her travel and work. But Phyllis Tickle said, Life is funny that way. Sometimes it takes place on a big stage. But most of the drama is in smaller places. The trick is to pay attention to cultivate awareness right here and right now. That there is the grand moment of Easter morning, but every Sunday is a little Easter, reminding us that the Word continues to become flesh in our daily lives. that we find God's transcendence in the imminent moment because of the presence of Christ. As it says in Colossians, 
whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That it's ordinary time. Time where we are present to one another. Time where we nurture the bonds of family or friendship. It is our daily work or our weekly to-do list. It is time gathered in worship or time gathered with our neighbors. It is time in prayer or in play. It is time laughing or crying, pondering or reflecting, where we can discover the presence of Christ that is with us. It is both ordinary and mysterious. It's helpful to remember that in the Gospel of Matthew, it says, on this rock, I will build my church. There are few things as ordinary as a rock. We find them everywhere, in streams and valleys, on mountaintops. We collect them, we take them with us. But something so ordinary can remind us of something extraordinary. Many times, in an extraordinary moment, we might pick a rock up off the ground and keep it as a way to hold on to that memory. Something ordinary and mysterious. That Christ as presence reminds us of the rock on which we build the church and our lives. Diana Butler Bass says there are two different kinds of mysteries. There is investigative mysteries, the kind where we gather all the facts and we lean into a detective story trying to answer all the questions, solving the mystery. But then there are revelational mysteries. These are different. It's a mystery which invites wonder and intrigue. That as we look more into the mystery, it just deepens the mystery. There's not necessarily an end to it. We don't solve the mystery or answer all the questions. That we live into the mystery, that it reveals something to us. It is as the Apostle Paul writes, Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. It is a mystery that continues to reveal something to us. We are thankful for Christ as presence that we look back on the life of Jesus and the disciples who shared meals with him and conversations with him, that they talked about parables together and they fed the 5,000. There was an intimacy to that relationship. But now, because of Christ as presence, we can still know him and relate to him and rely on him in a way that changes and transforms our lives, a way that connects us to the transcendence of God, but also to the imminence of it as well, because we are never left alone, that we cannot fully explain it, but we can experience it because of Christ as presence. May this Easter be a time where we all experience that presence yet again. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for those mysteries that continue to reveal things to us that are meaningful 
life-giving, and life-changing. We are thankful for your steadfast love, which we see and experience on Easter morning. And may we continue to experience it throughout our ordinary lives. Amen. If you would like more information about Auburn First Baptist Church, that can be found at auburnfbc.org.